Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Jimbo here with my pal Tommy, the IC1. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, go ahead and click uh, the link in your description box. He does really cool stuff, man. Playthroughs, retro collecting, and stuff like that. Please, by all means, check him out. He's sucking at games, Jevin. Yes, while. hilariously sucking at games. Um, so, this is going to be like the first episode in a new series uh, that I've kind of had rolling around in my brain for a while here. Just um, based upon some things that I've seen on, on YouTube from my fellow like game channels and stuff like that from conversations I've had with guys like Tommy, um, just, you know, bullshitting about collecting and things like that, you know, all the things that we think are funny, the things that piss us off and stuff like that. So I wanted to kind of throw my hat into the ring as far as my philosophy of collecting. This is by no means a, a, a manual or anything like that. Like, I'm not saying that, that my opinion is how it is. Uh, as far as collecting go, this is just kind of my two cents and some things that I've learned and some things that I feel based upon the time that I've been in this incredibly crazy hobby. Um, so today's subject is going to be uh, basically a couple fold. Uh, primarily with the state of retro gaming as it is today being prices, availability, um, yeah, which is just going through the roof. And, um, you know, just the, the perception of rarity, I think, um, is the overall topic here. You know, it's all really what someone perceives it to be like there is nothing that is absolutely set in stone this is a fluctuating market just like any other market uh, when it comes to collecting there's ups and there's downs and stuff and last i checked things are actually starting to come down just a little in a few areas we're stabilizing um, yeah i mean it's a couple things are coming down like turbo graphics is definitely going up nes is coming down just a little bit so um, Sega Genesis is starting to catch back up, Jaguar is starting to go up, um, Atari really hasn't done anything since the crash, so like, it's, things are always in a bit of a state of flux, but, I don't know, just, um, there's, there's a lot of things that I really scratch my head at when it comes to collecting that I really don't quite comprehend. Um, I'm just gonna pick a topic here, you know, we were discussing this earlier, I'm just gonna talk about the elephant in the room, Earthbound. My perception of Earthbound right now is basically that it's like the benchmark for a collector, which I think is ridiculous. Um, for the record, I don't own a copy of Earthbound. Tommy does. Um, so it's it's just something that I have trouble understanding, like why that game in particular has become the it thing to have um, if you're a collector. Like I understand that it's not super common. Um, it's not what I would call like unicorn rare like it's not like the Nintendo World Championship card where there's like you know 20 of them or whatever in the world that I understand um, because that's like a holy grail you know of, of NES collecting and whatnot but Earthbound they sold tens of thousands of copies of you know it's not something that I would call super duper fucking rare and I'm sure some of you guys would disagree with me on this but in Tommy and I's area, I've run into it several times. You know, I've been... I've been tested running into it a couple times myself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just... I mean, it's not something you run into every day, but when I was at MAGFest this past January, two different vendors had copies of Earthbound complete in the box. I mean, I remember... The reason I remember that is one of them had it in a big glass case, and they had this big obnoxious sign to it that said, yes, this is Earthbound, yes, it's a complete box, yes, it's $500, no, we're not budging on the price. So I was like, uh, okay. Which is so, kind of the stigma surrounding it in general is that, that price range there. Exactly. So it just made me really, that, that's kind of what started like this whole idea in my head is like, you know, who determines what that is worth? You know, I mean, I guess the majority of it is what somebody is willing to pay for it. But I think a lot of this, and this is just my two cents, is just fucking hype. I, I mean, sure. it's just, it's, it's people, it's perception of value. It's, it's, it's some person or a group of people's perception of what they feel is the thing to have. It only gets worse the more people that want to jump on the bandwagon and grab copies of it simply because they think they're investing in the game to sell it all later. Which is ridiculous. So, it, and that, that, Tommy brings up another good topic. Okay, so my opinion, guys, and just take this for what it's worth, as far as putting your money into games as far as an investment, I think that that is not a smart thing to do at all because I think investing money into almost anything that's a collector's market is not wise. There are a few exceptions, you know, there are consistent performers, you know, when you look through the history of collecting. Video gaming collecting is a very new thing. This is not a proven market. And I, I don't want to think it's proven that it can crash before. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, the Atari thing happened, you know, almost right out of the gate. So, I'm not saying that that's absolutely going to happen um, with Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, or anything like that. But if you look at history, it more than likely will. Not because of the Atari thing specifically, but because that seems to be the way that collectibles work. Like, I mean, the, the most obvious example, Beanie Babies. 
everyone predicted that those things would be like valuable as fuck one day and guess what they you couldn't give them away they're literally worth pennies like people are paying hundreds of dollars for like collectors versus now, these anytime you go to the thrift store there's just tons and tons of them exactly around. they're absolutely fucking worthless and again i'm not saying that's going to happen to your you know your prized nes uh cartridge or your prized super nintendo cartridge no like but i don't it's not unlikely sure. to see it hitting a because it's so high now it's not it could easily hit a low point just because nobody's gonna want to get in on it anymore yes like it's gonna it's bas basically here's how it works boys and girls it basically is going to keep peaking to the point where it reaches more or less the economic crescendo. And that's going to be the tipping point where people are going to be like, you know what, I'm tired of fucking paying this much for something like this, and they just walk. And that's when you get a lot of collectors bailing on this, and then the price tanks because the demand goes down. And then there's also going to be those people that just quit and put their collection away, so nothing's going to be available, the prices are going to be sky high, and then yes. it's just going to disappear. Yes. And he brings up another good point. That's the main reason why I think that people are really pricing earth, really pricing rather earthbound as the way they are, because the people that have them aren't selling them. Yeah. Like it's not so much that it's rare as in like low number of copies. It is relatively low, but there are way rarer things out there than this that are worth way less it, money. It's not unlikely that people bought them up to keep them and hoard them and sell them all. Oh, absolutely, that's, that's absolutely. That's a thing. Like, okay, so one example that I wanted to give to you guys. Okay. This is Chiller. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with this. I've talked about this on Retro Game Hall a few times. Uh, this is 100% complete in the box with the manual and whatnot. The manual is absolutely pristine. I'm not going to take it out and show you guys because it's in a case, but just watch Retro Game Hall. You'll see I pieced together this thing, all three pieces separately, and put it together. Impressive feat. Yes. I am the only person that I have ever met or have seen on YouTube who has a complete and copy, complete and box copy of this. I'm sure there are other people on YouTube who have this. I'm sure. James Rolfe or um, Pat the NES Punk has one, you know, guys at that level probably do, but none of the guys that I personally communicate with on YouTube has a complete box copy of this. Four or five of the people on YouTube I, com I communicate with have complete box earthbounds. So it really begs the question, what do you consider rare? Is it rare just because people want it, or is it rare because it has low numbers? I think it's. I think most people's concept of rarity nowadays is how much is it worth. Exactly. Just, not a reflection at all on what it's valued at, because for a long time there, Final Fantasy VII was at 50 bucks. now you can find it for $15. Which is ludicrous. So, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here, guys, and I would bet you, the majority of what you see behind me, that there is a hell of a lot less copies of this out here that were produced and sold than Earthbound. Because this, not an official release, was not a major push from Nintendo like Earthbound was. You know, it wasn't in a big box or anything with marketing behind it. This had basically no marketing behind it. This is basically a pirated game that was released on the NES, completely unauthorized. Things like that typically don't sell really well. So even if it did sell a bunch of copies back then, the number of them that are probably left in existence is probably very, very low. So the reason I'm bringing this up, guys, is it's perception of rarity. If Earthbound is valuable because it's rare, then why isn't this worth five or six times what Earthbound is? Why? Because people want to play Earthbound and not this. And that's fine. Like, if that's the real reason that people value Earthbound simply because they think it's a good game, they want to play it, okay, that's fine. But that's yeah, demand, not rarity. That, not that's not the same thing. What someone wants to do with, with any particular game, like, you know, it's the it game that they simply want to play, that does not mean that it's rare. Um, case in point, Contra, Mega Man, Castlevania. Yeah, those are really Million common. sellers, like, easily. Multi-million dollars, or multi-million copy sellers. And everybody knows they are. And everybody knows they are. And Why are they expensive? Still, still valuable demand. Yes. <laughs> Since I have bought my three verse, I have all three of the original NES Castlevania games complete in box. Since I have bought those less than a year ago, and I think Simon's Quest was 20, Castlevania 1 was probably 25, and the third one was probably 30 bucks, they've, like, tripled in value. Why? Are there that many fewer of them out there? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think it's shrinking that much inside of a year. Again, it's perception of value. Just because they have a high price, and just because some vendor says they're rare, that doesn't make them rare. That's a bunch of crap. That's one person's definition yeah. of what rare is. There's even newer examples. I mean, the Super Smash Brothers games. Oh my god, yeah, don't even get me started on that. So it's, I'm going to put this down. It's, it's a lot of people, I think, confusing rare with valuable because they aren't the same thing. As a matter of fact, sometimes they are almost mutually exclusive because there's sure. plenty of rare things that are for the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, all these other things that people really don't give a shit about. 
you know, that they, they're super hard to find. Yeah, yeah, they're very hard to find, but people don't want them simply because they either they haven't been, think been they're, hyped. Yeah. Or they're not a good game. Honestly. Yeah, or they're There's not a simply of, good game. No. Horrible games are worth money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, so it's not always like the the valuable games are always really good games. As a matter of fact, most of them aren't fucking good games. Like yeah. Pat the NES Punk himself, who is one of the few people in the world who wins a Nintendo World Championship card, has flat out said that it is not a good game because it's like fractions of three games. So I mean, it's cool to play as like a novelty, but is it a good game? No, of course not. Like it's. It's three free, three games or whatever that you already have that are very common that you can get at any fucking thrift store and play to completion. This is like pieces of each of those things. So, you know, it'd be cool to play against your friends with it, but dude, whatever, just get a reproduction cartridge if you want to do that. So, the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that it's, this whole thing, I think, has gone so freaking wildly out of proportion, and I think a lot of people are just kind of falling on their sword here and saying, oh, that's economics, or oh, that's just the way it works. Dude, bullshit. That, that's not just the way it works. I understand that something ultimately is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. That's really what it comes down to. Okay, fine. That's capitalism. Great. But at the same time, anyone who's out there basically feeding this machine is only exacerbating the problem. Yeah, it's only getting worse right now. No, it's, it's getting a lot worse. I mean, dude, I buy things on eBay, I buy things locally, like I do a little bit of both. Um, I definitely do not give people what they feel is the asking price for things, like the typical going rate for things, unless it's something I absolutely have to have because I collect something like a Bomberman item, but it, even that I'm going to try and knock them down. And honestly, I wouldn't tell you to ever buy something that, no. that defeats the purpose. No. If you're a real collector, you're not after it for its asking price. No, and again, he brings up another really good point. This has always been my estimation as far as what determines a collector versus a buyer. I consider myself a collector for one simple reason. If everything you saw behind me here tank, and guys, I know what this stuff is worth. I have a rough idea what everything in this room is worth, and it's not cheap. If everything in this room completely tanked to zero overnight, I can honestly say I would wake up the next day and not care. I really wouldn't. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like, bullshit, man. Like, you wouldn't care about losing all that money. I don't consider that losing money because I'm getting what I want. I buy these things because I love them, because I love to play them, because I love to enjoy them, because I love to sit down with my friends with like Tommy and enjoy them because we have that in common. It's not what someone out there thinks it's worth. It's not what I think it's worth financially. It's what it's worth sentimentally to me. You know, because I'm taking back a piece of my childhood. So it kind of comes back to that investment thing. I mean, if you're looking at your game and you're picking it up and saying, well, I spent this much on it, but it's worth this much. Unless you're planning on selling it, it really doesn't matter. Exactly. An investment is only an investment is it in if you're planning to get a return on the investment. My entire collection is, I'm not, I'm I'm not, not selling, selling this. I'm, I'm going to go on record and say, guys, like, unless I'm laying in a bed broke, dying of cancer, this stuff isn't going anywhere. Like, that's the only way that I would ever consider selling this stuff. Screw that. Like, I'm starting cancer. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. Well, like, I keep at least a few games to play while I'm sitting there dying. But, no, I mean, in all seriousness, guys, no. It's, I do not see this as an investment. I, I, I'm sorry. I simply do not. A real collector does not look at the monetary value of things. A real collector wants the item simply because he wants it. It's not because someone else wants it, it's not because it's valuable, or because it's the thing to have, they simply want it because it exists. It's that simple. My father, for example, collects watches. Like, I guess, if there is a collecting gene, then I inherited it from him. His collection of watches is worth tens of thousands of dollars. He's got Omegas, Rolexes, Tag Howers, Breitlings, like all the really expensive stuff that's worth, you know, several thousand dollars per watch. Does he give a crap that that's how much it's worth? No, the guy is just a freaking watch nerd. You know, I mean, he's got little winders in his closet and everything like that. He takes care of them and everything. He's he's that way about watches like I am with this stuff. Like, that's his thing. This is my thing. But ultimately, if the value of those things tanked overnight, would he care? No, because he's never going to sell them. So to him, it makes no difference. He's going to pass them on to me when he dies, and I don't care if they're worthless. They belong to my dad. That's why they'll always mean something to me. So Can you actually bring up another good point? What's that? Uh, the nerd versus the, the guy that's going out just to grab games yeah. thinking he's gonna sell them yeah that's that's another horrible issue is that guy that's just out looking for things at low prices that he's just gonna repush back in the market at the you know 300% inflated price which is ridiculous and full disclosure guys Tommy and I do sell games at the Starland but I'll tell you this much 
Of all the people that are there, I would guarantee you that we are undercutting almost everyone there. I guarantee you we're undercutting the store. Because we, we go out of our way to do that. Like, we have a sign behind us on our table um, that specifically says, you know, we're collectors. Yeah. Like, we're not just resellers. Like, we're collectors first. We're just giving you, you know, yeah. making the, our extras available. They're the games that we had overflow on. Yes. So, we might have bought uh, this game, but it was in this lot. Now we have this many games, so then we're going to try to get rid of the extras. But Exactly. Usually it's a re... I mean, I've sold, like, copies of Link to the Past for, like, 20 bucks when it's easily $35, $40 pushable. But I don't... Why? If somebody wants to play it, why not? If they come up to me and they're low on money, they say, hey, I got 20 bucks, we take it? Yes. Sure. And what's funny, and this, this is a really funny story for you guys, um, the several times that we've um, been vendors at this thing with our little table and stuff like that, we have been absolutely amazed at the number of people who are simply either scared or unwilling to haggle. They're like intimidated because it's probably the market. I mean, that you see an expensive game, you might want it. That might be something you really want to play, but they're yeah. so... They know what eBay has priced it at, yep. which is not realistic. And, you know, they're afraid to even approach us because you're not going to give me that game for, you know, 20 bucks when it's worth 50 bucks. Exactly. I mean, it's to the point where we have a, another sign hanging behind us that says it's basically instigating haggling. We're like, you know, guys, if you see something you want, throw us a price. Like, you know, I mean, we're not we're not guaranteed that we're going to take it, but I mean, will we discuss it with you? Absolutely. I mean, if I bought the entire lot for 20 bucks just because I wanted that one game, if you want that, that game for $5, even though it's worth 20 itself, why not? I'm not, I'm not losing any money. No. it's. I mean, it's... This just gives puts a few dollars in our pocket so to we go can, back out and buy more. Exactly, so that we can go, you know, bid on the things in the Starling auction, maybe pick up a couple of extra games or anything. We can't exactly retire on this, you know. This isn't—I no. wouldn't even call it a part-time job, you know, not a, not even a good part-time job. We just, you know, I'd rather give back to the community and make these games accessible to people like me for a lesser price. Like if I make two or three dollars on the sale of a game, okay, fine, but they're saving. Probably 50 to 60 percent off of the going rate. Yeah, and I, the only time I feel bad is when I think somebody might be a reseller. Like they're looking at it yeah. with that intent I hate to that. jack it back up. I mean, that's, that's that just pisses you off when that happens. There's actually one person at Gamers Exchange that we are pretty sure is a reseller, mm -hmm. and we just every time we're at an auction against him, it's horrible. You can tell that he's after it for reasons. And you know who you are. We won't name names for you. It doesn't matter. If you want, you know who you are. No, we know who you are. We can. It's for fellow collectors. It's very easy to spot another collector. Like a reseller sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. There's just something about them that just doesn't seem kosher. For the and kind of person that will put their hand up and every time somebody else is bidding without thinking, because yes. they know exactly what they can push it out for. Yep. They don't have to think about it. They're working with a much smaller budget. Because I mean, let's face it, guys. Collectors are cheap because there's so much that we want. Unless you're rich, you know, you don't have infinite funds to spend on everything you want at any given time. There have been stuff that went to auction that are prices I would still bid on, but yeah. I don't I don't know what else is coming up, but I'm collecting everything. Exactly. So that's pretty much our thoughts on this one, guys. But you know what? You've heard what we think on this. Just take this as the opinion of two different collectors. Just as an FYI, Tommy, he's he's an RPG, JRPG guy. Yeah. I'm not. Like, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I'm not hating on anyone who is, but... Earthbound, Final Fantasy, dude, fuck that. Like, that's that's not my thing. If it's your thing, that's cool. You, Some of you may think that Bomberman's fucking stupid. That's fine. That doesn't make it worth any less to me. If everyone in the world, everyone who watches this show, you know, all five of you are whatever, hated Bomberman. I wouldn't care. Like, seriously, that would not slow me down one single bit. As a matter of fact, if every ounce of interest in that, in that entire field of video games disappeared, I would be grabbing everything I've ever wanted Bomberman yeah, related. I'd be grabbing say, it all just... up. You could just clear house. <laughs> Dude, the first thing I'd do is go out and buy Saturn Bomberman. It's like $150 fucking dollars. I'm pretty sure like, we would walk into this room and it would be nothing but Bomberman. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it would be a whole wall. I mean, like, no. I mean, if price were, you know, if, if price weren't an issue and everything was cheap, you know, every NES game ever made was a dollar, oh, dude, I'd be buying shit left and right, you know, just to complete the collection. But unfortunately, it's not, you know. Again, perception, unfortunately, in this market equals price. So you've heard what we think, guys. This is just the opinion of two collectors. Tommy and I do have a lot of common threads as collectors. We both love Bomberman, for example. He's a big fan. I'm a big fan. He loves JRPGs. I don't. So we disagree on things, but there's never been any bad blood between us because of that, right? No. No, it's just like we both have different interests, and there's no, like, you know, fuck you, you're wrong kind of stuff. But we want to hear what you think, actually. 
Go ahead and leave us a comment in this video and let us know what you think. Talk about the perception of value, um, what you think about the whole Earthbound, little Samson thing, you know, where you think the market's going. Seriously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. That's really the whole point of me doing this video series is to put the word out there and I want to hear what you guys think as well because I know that my opinion is far from the ultimate one. No one has the ultimate opinion, man. This is a community. We all need to contribute. And opinions and opinions. Yes. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much, Tommy, the icy one. Check out his channel. Um, thanks, everyone, so much for stopping by. And I guess I'll see you next time on Retro Collecting 101.